Okay, this is uh, a set of level three alto sax solos, Nisma solos. Uh, you have to do Shalom Alechem and also the Pasapide on the other side here. I'm going to do the Shalom Alechem first. Um, watch out for your key signature. You've got a lot more flats than you used to on saxophone. B flat, E flat, A flat, and D flat. So there's quite a few uh, things going on here. Um, also a lot of long phrases here, of course. Not too much in terms of dynamics. We've got mezzo piano at the beginning, mezzo forte in the middle, and then forte, mezzo forte, mezzo piano at the ending. Um, nothing too serious there, though, in terms of uh, dynamics. The notes are really the hard part, and getting that nice smooth kind of sound. There's lots of long phrases here. Um, really, this song is all about sound. You can see it's marked lento at the very beginning. Very, very slow. Okay. Uh, I'm going to see what I can do to this thing. There are uh, quite a few, like I said, D flats. Watch out for those. Same as C sharp, you know, no fingers. Um, there are quite a few A flats. There are quite a few uh, E flats as well. Uh, although there are some E naturals marked too here too. So watch out for that. Okay, right at the beginning. <laughs> My sound is a little scratchy there. I hope you get a better sound than me. Um, there was that one little error in the middle. I'd have to practice that high D flat. Remember, high D flat's just going to be your octave key in the back. No other fingers. That's a little tricky for me. Um, I'm also using the side key B flat, the two fingers plus your bottom roller coaster key here, B flat. You could use the bis key if you'd want to. If you're used to using the bis key, that might be an option here as well too. Um, I don't think the one on one B flat's going to help you at all. I would probably either go with the bis key or with the two fingers plus your side key uh, on this one. But other than that, not too many technical details here. Take it nice and slow, make sure you get all the notes right at first. Uh, it's a very distinctive kind of uh, Israeli kind of sound, that, that Middle Eastern natural minor, harmonic minor kind of sound. Uh, so just make sure you get all the notes right, make sure you get a good sound, and this one should be fairly easy. Okay, this is the Pasapid that goes along with Shalom. Uh, Couple things to watch out for here. First of all, it is uh, it does change key signature partway through. The first half is in B minor. It's got two sharps in the key signature, F sharp and uh, C sharp, and then it goes to B major uh, about two thirds of the way down the page. You can see there. Um, we'll talk about the B major part in just a minute. I'm going to tackle these separately. The B minor part, though, at the beginning, uh, and in fact, the whole song is labeled Allegro Scherzando. Allegro fairly fast, of course. A scherzando is a small scherzo. A scherzo is a musical kind of a happy musical jokey kind of piece uh, usually written in triple time and usually played at a fairly quick tempo so that it's really counted just in one so kind of one two three one two three one two three in this case we have three eight time signature of course so the eighth notes are going to get one beat each um, the sixteenth notes are going to be like TTs like eighth notes in regular time so at the very beginning we have three one and da 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 um, a lot of staccatos and slurs to watch out for here. There are a couple of dynamic changes too. You can see the first line or a little bit more is this forte. Then it kind of echoes the piano part. This is kind of an echo. Uh, we have another forte and then a couple lines down later it changes to piano and then crescendos up to forte for the end of the B minor section before we go into major. Uh, the entire major section is in piano until we DSL back to the beginning. Um, so, Right from the top, I'm going to give this a shot. There are a couple tricky technical parts. Um, watch out for the D sharps on line four or so. 
Um, I also personally had a little trouble with the A sharp on line six, I guess it is. Um, D sharp, to remember, same as E flat, six fingers plus your pinky key. In this case, they're all high D sharp, so you're also going to have your uh, thumb key here. Um, the A sharp, of course, is the same as B flat. Now, I'm using my side key, my two fingers here, plus my side key for the B flat or A sharp. Um, if you want to, you can use the bis key if you know that, and if it works out better for you here, like in Shalom. Okay, uh, so right at the beginning, let's see if I can do this thing. crescendo there. Okay, before you tackle this B major section, the main amoso, the bottom half, the pas beat, um, I would definitely make sure that B, the B scale is part of your repertoire for your Nismith solo. You're going to want to play the B scale and also just get really, really comfortable with it because this whole section is in B major. We have F sharp, C sharp, and then G sharp, D sharp, A sharp as well. A sharp is the tricky one for me at least. It's usually the last um, accidental and a key signature that gets tricky for people. A sharp, remember, is the same as B flat. So you've got your bis key, or you've got two and two plus uh, two fingers here plus your side. Um, or in a pinch, you've got one and one, although that one's the least desirable, I'd say. It's the less, at least in tune. Um, once you get good with the B scale, this one's going to be a lot easier. So I would really practice the B scale a lot before you get into this. Um, it is the high version of the B scale, so you don't have to worry about those low notes. Starting on high B, C sharp. D sharp, remember, six fingers plus your pinky, like E flat. E natural. F sharp. G sharp, football key. A sharp, remember, two fingers plus your side. And then high B. Yeah. You can hear, I really need to do it too. Um, do it straight up and down until you've memorized it. Do it in thirds, do it in different articulation patterns. Get really, really familiar with the B scale before you try this second part. Okay, so once you get familiar with the B scale, the, the second half of the song is not actually all that hard. It is marked piano. It is marked also meno moso, which means less motion. So you can go just a little bit slower on this one. That's a benefit too. And then remember, of course, when you get to the end, it has DS Alfini, which means you go back to the first full measure at the top of the page. Um, and play the first section again to see Fiena. Okay, so starting on uh, the D sharp at the end of line two, four, six, I guess, uh, where it goes to B major. <laughs> Still a couple little trouble spots in there for me. The, the hardest part for me was definitely the last line. Um, there's a couple of the A sharps in there. Remember, A sharps in B flat. That just kind of threw me for a loop just a little bit. And there's an awful lot also of D sharps in this one. So there's a lot of fingers involved here, of course, with D sharp. Um, take it nice and slow at first. Really work out the details. Really work out the, the notes and the rhythms. Like I said, get really familiar with the B scale first. You want to you wanna not only have it memorized, you want to have it so you can do it in your sleep, the B scale before you tackle this part. I think once you have the B scale dead to rights, so to speak, the last part of this will be not too much problem at all. Good luck. <laughs> 